Come on, somebody. He's the Lion of Judah, the great.
Saints. I'm Pastor Chris Waters, the proud pastor of the historic, thankful Baptist Church in beautiful downtown Augusta, Georgia. Listen, my wife and I had a fantastic week where we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. Yes, can you believe that? 20 years of wonderful union given by God. What a gift it was. And just want to thank everyone for your well wishes during this week and certainly to the Lord for bringing us together and allowing us to enjoy 20 wonderful years of marriage. It's actually been longer than that, that we have been a couple, but we thank God for these wonderful times and pray for many more in the future. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to dive into the message today as we celebrate Palm Sunday. We know this as the day where Jesus makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We know next Sunday will be Easter Sunday. We will be in person at the historic Thankful Baptist Church Sanctuary at 302 Walker Street, Augusta, Georgia, 30901 downtown, right across the street from Mate Park. I want to see you in the building. Yes, come be my special guest next Sunday. Listen, if you're a guest, if you're a visitor, make sure you come up after service and say, Pastor, I accepted your invitation and I'm here today. So I just want to give you a warm, thankful welcome personally next week. We're going to start service at 10.50 a.m. We have special music planned for you and a word just for you. We will be observing the CDC protocols for COVID-19 restrictions. We know that the rules have been laxed across our state, but we also know that this infection is not gone. So we're going to be asking Please follow the directions that our ministry leaders give you for my healthcare ministry as you enter the church. We we'll ask you to sanitize it for your hand. We'll have temperature checks at the door. We will be socially distancing. Don't worry. The seats have already been marked in advance, but we have room for you. We've got a nice size sanctuary and we can accommodate you. And we'll ask you to wear your mask. Please wear your mask for the service. And we will do our part, but not holding you, but for about an hour and 10 minutes. Amen and amen. Listen, I want to see you in the place next week. Now, if you can't make it, we will have the replay afterwards uh, on Facebook and YouTube at church website, but there's nothing like being in person on Easter Sunday morning. Anyway, let me get into this word today. I know Kelvin blessed you with that song to prepare us for this wonderful day. And now we want to get the meat of the word of God. God has placed in my heart for you on this Sunday. It will be coming from the Gospel of Luke chapter 19, verses 36 through 38 for your hearing. And the word of God says, and as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amen. Amen. And amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Bless be the word of God. Well, our lesson today is going to come from the subject, a moment of grace, a moment of grace. This morning, as many of you know, is known as Palm Sunday. Yes, Palm Sunday. We commemorate this day when Jesus makes his grand entrance into the city of Jerusalem. This is the capital of Judah. This is God's holy city. Jerusalem's name literally means the city of peace. The prince of peace rides into the city of 
peace. This name Jerusalem is somewhat paradoxical considering the state of the city and the events that are about to occur, occur in this Passion Week. The city of peace hasn't seen peace in many years at this point in our text. They have been conquered by the Romans and occupied by Caesar's army. They are under the oppressive rule of the Roman government occupied as a territory ruled by a governor taxed by Caesar and must answer to Gentiles. The city of peace is actually a city of strife. Jews on one side, Gentiles on the other. And here comes Jesus riding right into the middle of both. He comes into the city on the back of a white coat as the people line the streets to receive him like a great king returning from battle. But how many of you know that the battle Battle that must be fought has yet to even begin. Yes, this is a prelude, if you will, for this is just a preview of what is to come. But Jesus is going to come. In this time, it's just a rehearsal. This time, it's just a, 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 if you will, a snapshot of the future returning Jesus in his complete power and glory. Jesus is going to come at a time and in a place that no man knows but the Father. A time when people will not be shouting because they hope he is a king come to save them, but he will be shouting because he will reveal himself as the King of kings and Lord of lords. It will be a time when not just Jerusalem will shout and praise, but the Bible tells us that every knee will have to bow and every tongue will have to confess that he is Lord. As Jesus rode into the city on this day, they do not yet know who he really is, but they respond bond in anticipation that he is the one that was prophesied that would come after King David. So the people threw palm branches on the streets in front of him and they mark this time of celebration by worshiping and praising the Savior Jesus. The white coat that he rides on had great symbolic uh, meaning to the Jews. Uh, it was a symbol of peace. Uh, Jesus was not coming to make war. If he was coming to make war, he would have ridden in on a horse that was pulling a chariot. Uh, but he's not the prince of war. He is the prince of peace peace. Uh, yes, he is uh, Hosanna. He is Emmanuel. He is uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, the Prince now rising up to become King and Lord of he, not just these people, but all the people of the world that whosoever would call on his name, uh, whosoever would believe in him, whosoever would confess their sin, he would be their Lord and their Savior. This image is taken from the historical books in which Solomon enters the city on a white coat after the death of his father, David. That's the irony of this triumphal entry. Solomon rides in after a death has occurred. Jesus rides in before death occurs. He's praised before he is to become the sacrificial lamb. He is lifted up before he's become He's going to be torn down. He is approved and applauded before he is rejected and abused. Uh, the lesson here is clear. Sometimes God gives you a grace period. Uh, sometimes God gives you uh, a moment of peace before the storm. It is not 
to cause people to be confused. God does it so he can strengthen you for the testing period that is to come. Just like the construction of a major building always starts off with a groundbreaking ceremony. A portrait of the finished project is presented to the people. People come to support, to affirm and encourage those getting ready to endure the construction or the building of the project. But once the celebration is over, once the ribbon has been cut, once the dirt has been moved, the real work now begins. And the real work never starts out being pretty. No, 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 no. He has come in his celebration and their anticipation of something wonderful, something divine, something majestic is about to occur. And they can sense this changing of the God, this shifting of the times and everybody wants to be a part of the celebration. So why? Does it end so soon? Why does this moment of grace seem to quickly fade away? Some would even ask, God, you know the trouble that is about to come. Why even have a period of grace? Why have the triumphal entry before the bloody crucifixion? As I said before, God wants you to get in your mind a firm image of who you really are before deconstruction begins. Because once the testing starts, the trouble, the trials, the tribulation, the project, the constructing project is going to get messy. Yes, during the times of testing, it's dirty, it's dusty, it's grimy. And truth be told, everybody who's with you in the celebration won't have the heart to stick around for the real work. Very few people want to stand and watch when the dirty part is taking place. Everybody's there when you get your appointment. Everybody is there congratulating you upon your assignment. But when the real work starts, when the dirty part happens, when the trials begin, when the testing occur, you'll find as you look around, those same people that celebrated with you will quickly leave and desert when it's time to get to work. As we see in the text, few are with Jesus when it's time to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. There was few who stood as Jesus was being arrested. In fact, there were none there when he was being accused before Pilate. None of his followers were present when he was put in a trumped up trial. There was no one to speak on his behalf, no character witnesses to declare the man's innocence. Nobody was there. Once he had been convicted on false charges, nobody but the Lord was there when he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, when the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we were healed. There, there was nobody but Jesus. Because there's some things that you got to face by yourself. Some things the adoring crown cannot endure with you. Some things the masses who cried out, Hosanna, cannot stand. There are some things that those who laid down the palm branches cannot uphold you in the times when you are feeling God forsaken. But because God knows he's got to stand alone, he gives him a grace period. He gives him a moment of peace, a moment of celebration. He helps to prepare himself so that he's strong enough to declare not my will, 
but let thy will be done in the garden of Gethsemane. He's strong enough to deny himself, pick up his cross and follow his father's command. He's, he, he, he gives him a moment of grace so that he's emotionally and spiritually ready for the good Friday when they will nail him to a cross. And he has to hang there all day long on that old rugged cross for your sakes and mine. Yes, he needed a moment of grace. He needed a moment of grace just like you and I need the moments of grace. We need periods of grace. We need time when people love us, time when people support us, time when we are affirmed, time when we are encouraged, time when we are patted on the back and we are given the type of support that we need to emotionally strengthen ourselves for the journey when life becomes difficult and sometimes the moments become lonely. We need God's grace as a reminder that though we face trials and tribulations, all of these things are temporary. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. They come, but they don't come to stay. They come to pass. All our troubles, just like Jesus' week of suffering comes to pass. Jesus is given a glimpse of his future. From the beginning, when he rides in on the white colt and he is lifted up and he is praised and they lay down before him and worship him, he is given a reminder that the crucifixion is for a purpose and his death is for a cause. But not only that, you know the suffering won't last always. Both his suffering and his death are temporary. Oh, hallelujah. Both the ending and the beginning of a new era is going to occur in just the moment right after the grace of God does its work. We will know that the suffering would end. We will know that the death for those who are in Christ is but for a moment, just like our Lord and our Savior. Our trials will not last forever. Our testing will not last forever. Our troubles won't last forever. Or oh, it may seem like it's in slow motion while you're going through. It may seem like it's dragging on forever when you're the person that's dealing with a marriage that is broken down and you're the person dealing with a rebellious child or you're the person dealing with an illness in your body, when you are the person dealing with financial strain, when you are the victim of false accusations, when you are the one whose name and reputation has been drugged through the mud, when you are the one that's guilty of the sins that you've been found out about, and now the world knows your secret. It's Seems like it may last forever when you're the focal point of criticism and complaint. Oh, thanks be unto God. They don't come to stay. No, no, no. Trouble comes to pass. And I know troubles seem to play out in slow motion. Suffering consumes our minds. It consumes our attention and our focus. And as modern Christians, we are blessed that we know the ending of this story. We know that Jesus does not die on the cross and remain dead. We know that Good Friday is not finality for Jesus. We know the ending of the story. We are the Easter people. We are the resurrection people. We are the ones that know a celebration is coming. But when you in the middle of it oh it can seem like it's going to last forever and 2,000 years ago Jesus followers had no clue what was going to happen other than what he had told them but they did not know for certain they had to take it on faith Jesus followers had no idea that all of this was going to be reversed and just a few days they had no idea triumphal entry was going to result in a good Friday. They had no idea that the cheering crowd 
would change into a raging mob. They had no idea the city of peace would become the place of crucifixion. They had no idea that the Pharisees would become profiteers of death. They had no idea that the friends of Jesus and his followers would suddenly become their biggest enemies. He had no idea that the disciples would themselves become deserters. And Jesus the Savior would become the lamb that was slain. But thanks be unto God who knows all and prepares his children in advance. So we are ready for what the times may bring. God always gives us grace before the challenge because he wants us like his son Jesus to have the strength to endure the suffering. Oh, hallelujah. Grace is a reminder that good news is always around the corner. That today you may experience trouble, but keep on holding on. Good news is on the way. God is going to bring some good out of your bad. God is going to squeeze some good out of your dilemma. God. God is going to give you a, a second chance and a turnaround if you can hold on to his amazing grace. As the hymn writer reminds us, marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the lamb was spilled. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Sin and despair like the sea waves cold. Threaten the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater yes, grace untold points to the refuge the mighty cross. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can we do to wash it away? Uh, there is a flowing crimson tide. Uh, brighter than snow you may be today. Uh, marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. Uh, freely bestowed on all who believe. Uh, you that are longing to see his face. Will you this moment receive his grace? Oh, hallelujah. Just receive this moment of grace. Uh, don't fight it. Uh, don't critique it. Uh, don't question it. Uh, when God's being good to you, uh, know that God's just getting you ready uh, to go to the next level. Uh, when God's being good to you, uh, know that his grace is preparing you uh, for the trouble of head. Uh, you don't have to be worried. You don't have to be afraid. Just hold on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus for your moment of grace. Stay in the moment of grace. Pray for the moment of grace. For Paul tells us that his grace, it is sufficient. His grace has the power to hold you when you can't hold yourself. Paul even admits that in my weakness, his grace, ew, hallelujah, is made perfect. God God perfects us uh, through the moments of grace uh, so that when Satan comes, uh, when the enemy attacks, uh, when all hell breaks loose, uh, you don't lose yourself uh, and the chaos doesn't enter you, uh, but you can stand still uh, and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, you can begin to sing as the saints before, amazing grace, uh, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> was blind, but now I see amazing grace. God gives it to us. It's our gift from the Lord. Not only will grace prepare you, not only will grace keep you, not only will grace save you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But even when it looks like 
life that even death has overcome, grace will raise you back up and give you a new life in Christ. Get ready for your moment of grace as we walk in the grace of God, which surpasses all understanding to help guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. This ministry, this, 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 this week of uh, preparation for the gift that is the resurrection of Jesus is a moment of grace. Receive it, walk in it, and get prepared for God to take you to the next level. For he says in his word, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. So we ask you to receive his grace as he gives it today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I hope you were blessed by this message today. And let your hearts be receptive to the grace of God that abounds all around you. And I hope to see you next Sunday, Easter Sunday, at Thankful Baptist Church. Amen.